Welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and thanks once again for joining us at Central Kentucky Christian Radio 99.1 FM uh, WJMM. Let me ask you, how are you feeling if you joined us yesterday? If not, you can go back and look at that. We'll cover that in a minute. How are you feeling after yesterday's form of encouragement to spur one another on in love and good deeds? You feeling like you've been spurred in the side like the horse who needs the extra encouragement? Now, again, you can check it out, as I said, at WJMM.com and or at LoveAndLordship.com. If you go to WJMM.com, there's a podcast tab over on the right, and then click on the Love and Lordship links, and you'll find today and the previous two days' messages. If you go to LoveAndLordship.com, you can find all of these on our Vimeo page or our Podbean page. There are icons there on the on the uh, home page, or you can click on the uh, watch, listen, read tabs at the top and find videos, podcasts, and articles. Again, all scriptures are linked in the articles, or that's my goal. I may have missed one now and then, so that you can go directly to the Word and not only study for yourself but hold me accountable. I. I ask you to also connect with me. Uh, if you have questions or comments, uh, good or bad, doesn't matter. I, I, I welcome them all to loveandlordship at gmail.com. Loveandlordship at gmail.com. Thanks for those who have been doing that. Uh, some connect with us on our Facebook page and Twitter and other places, but that's the quickest and easiest way, and uh, I'll certainly get back with you, and I thank you for doing that. I often find it interesting how in Scripture the Holy Spirit inspired the writers to align the wording in such a way that points out what we really need in order to be able to follow through in loving obedience. I haven't always liked it, but I've learned and am still learning that God's ways and truth are much better than mine or anyone else's I've ever heard of. Building on the scripture text from yesterday's message, I find one of these instances where spurring is probably exactly what I and maybe you need in order to follow through on how we are to grow as disciples of Jesus and as members of his body and help others do the same in love and good deeds. They should be an overflow of who we are as disciples. They should be evidence of the fruit of salvation and grace and mercy and love in our lives, all rooted in his truth. Ultimately, this is what we're called to do as his followers and in his church. Many believe that we are living in the end times, and I certainly agree, although I don't spend much time dwelling on that, but instead dwell on what his word tells me I'm supposed to do, just as the apostles, disciples, and writers of God's holy word did in telling us what they knew. They were in the latter days. That's why we need to pay attention with great focus to what he's given us to do in the commands that are all ultimately wrapped up in the two greatest commands. Worship God alone and love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then love your neighbor as you love yourself. These are the essence, and they sum up all the law and the prophets. And they're the essence of being a believer in Christ and will help us as we study today's one another's as I mentioned yesterday, we have two of them today, and I hope and I think you'll see why. I'm going to come back and read it in just a minute, but I said yesterday when we were talking about the form of encouragement known as spurring one another on, that encouragement comes in many forms. One of those is in the form of a negative command that God gives us often in Scripture, that the Lord calls us to simply not simply to encourage each other, but to be sure that we are not slandering or tearing others down. How are you doing when it comes to encouragement versus slander? One builds up, the other tears down. It's that simple. We're going to look at two one another's today, as one of them is a continuation again of yesterday's command to spur one another on to love and good deeds, and a repeat of several others which shows that it's very important because the Holy Spirit made sure it got in the Scripture several times. Paul reminds us as he exhorts us to not forsake our assembling together in loving fellowship, 
that we are to once again encourage one another in Hebrews 10, 25. So let's look for ways to encourage other believers, especially when it comes to gathering together to do so in building up the loving fellowship of all believers. We need this now as much as ever. Let me read that Hebrews 10, 25 to you. That he's told us to spur one another on in love and good deeds. And then he goes on in verse 25 to say, not abandoning our own meeting together, as is the habit of some people, but encouraging one another and do it all the more as you see the day drawing near. Paul and others, John, Peter had talked about end times. They were in them. We're still in them. God is patient because he desires that everyone would repent. James 4.11 carries with it the antithesis of this, right? Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but you're sitting in judgment on it. Folks, that's reserved for Jesus and Jesus alone in the law. Now, we can inspect the fruit, and when we get the plank out of our own eye, we can talk to and help others see the speck in their own eye. But that's the extent we're given, all right? This meeting together so that we can encourage one another and stop slandering, it's not just a meeting of weekend services, although that is certainly an important part of it, as the writer of Hebrews reminds us. And in Acts 2, 2 that's where we follow the example of the first church. This also includes, though, as it would have in biblical times, the gathering together in small groups, homes, or other fellowship meetings to encourage one another and build godly, loving relationships that hold us accountable in love to the Lord and to each other. Be constantly looking for opportunities to do so and then make it happen. Whatever you do, don't get caught up in being guilty of ignoring then the second one another today, which is a negative one, right? It's from James. I just read it. He's the half-brother of Jesus and was the elder of the church at Jerusalem. In James 4.11, he instructs us under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, do not slander one another. You think maybe as the head of the young church in Jerusalem, one who likely may have slandered Jesus at some point. Go back and read the Gospels and, and see how his brothers and those in his family treated him early on. You think maybe now as the head of the young fledgling church in Jerusalem that James may have encountered the human nature that he had in him that's in all of us that tends to pull and tear others down even among believers? You see, as I said earlier, this is the antithesis, the opposite of encouragement, which is why I'm sharing these two one another's together. What we are called to do and what we are called not to do. My precious late mother, along with my dad, used to say to my brother and sister and myself something we've all likely heard in some way or another. If you can't say something good about someone, don't say anything at all. This would certainly help us not to slander or tear others down, right? Especially other believers. This does not mean we avoid speaking hard truths that must be shared or we are not loving them. But it does mean we never intentionally speak harmed, even when we're speaking the truth. We do not intentionally speak harm to or about others. But as we've been commanded elsewhere, we build one another up and do so in Christ. I find it strongly compelling that this text comes right after James 4.10, as we know the verses, in which we are instructed to humble ourselves before the Lord. You see, without humility, we will find ourselves slandering and tearing each other down under the guise of pointing out faults or I'm going to include you in our prayers. May we humble ourselves and choose not to slander our brothers and sisters in Christ, and folks, that has to start in our hearts. Have you ever been the target of slander from other believers? I have numerous times. Did you respond in kind? 
slander back or tear down? Or did you humbly pray and forgive? I learned early on. I struggled, but I learned early on that the humility and the prayer and the forgiveness is a much better path. Freeze me up. Do you find yourself in weak moments saying things that tear others down, that slander them? How can we intentionally choose to encourage rather than slander? I doubt there is one of us that has not at some point been guilty of slandering someone else in some way. I know I have. We need to seek forgiveness when we are caught in those moments when we choose to tear someone down because it has been done to us or we fail to lift and build them up, encourage them as we are called to do. This requires humility to lift someone up and not slander or tear them down or bring them down to my level. Help us, Holy Spirit, once again, as a powerful way of loving others to encourage and build them up by your grace and for your glory rather than slander and tear them down. Here's some food for thought as we wrap up this week's One Another series. Because Tomorrow's a Family Foundation Friday, right? In what ways have others encouraged you and it made a positive difference in your life? I asked that yesterday, but we need to think about that. What about the times that you spurned the gentle encouragement and then went on doing the wrong thing? But someone came along not just to spur you on, but instead of tearing you down, they spurred you on. They encouraged you. Now, are you willing, even when others may not do it to you, to encourage them rather than slander or tear them down? We do this by His grace, in His wisdom, and in love. Here's our four action items. Spend time with God and in His Word and prayer every day, listening to Him as well. Begin with the scriptures in this episode. Number two, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Number three, can you remember a time when someone slandered you? What was it like and how did you respond? Number four, has there been a time and have you hung on to it when you slandered or tore down someone else? What do you need to do about that? As I've shared before, some of these one another's are tough, and this one is tough as well because oftentimes we, we claim prayer when we should be saying we're actually slandering. So let's be really careful with that. You see, I said yesterday even, we're winding down this series, and we found that even the ones that sound really good are oftentimes very difficult. And we need the authority of Christ that we've been given as our Savior and Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit in us to do so. I pray that you will do that as we continue to live out the first and now the second greatest commands that cover everything we do. Check out these uh, others and uh, share it. And check us out tomorrow as we move into Family Foundation Friday and invite family, friends, loved ones, and even enemies because there's a lot going on in our culture. And we need to be abreast of it so that we can talk in truth and love and uh, help be salt and light to a hurting and dying world. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you can go to loveandlordship.com, click on the Give tab if the Lord is leading you to give to us. All donations are tax deductible, and we thank you so much for it. If it's not us, keep praying and seeking until the Lord shows you where to give and where to partner, and then be obedient there. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in Christ. Stay tuned for Bill Reeser and Encounter, and at 1245, Greg Horn and Hope is here. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.